God. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, church. I miss y'all so much. It's just a, it's an honor to come here on this Easter Sunday. You know, I just want to thank Pastor. He, he listens to what the Holy Spirit tells him. I can't argue that point because I wanted to say, Pastor, you need to be preaching this Sunday. But he says, first thing he told me when he, uh, he texted me, he says, Holy Spirit told me that you're going to be preaching this Easter Sunday. And I can't argue that point, so thank God I'm, I'm here this morning. I'm able to be here. I give God all the praise and the glory. And uh, can't wait till we get back and start hugging one another. I miss that hug. I miss that fellowship with one another. And this Easter, uh, to look around in the church and there's nobody here, just breaks my heart so much. But I understand why and what's going on. But it's going to get better. It's going to get, as Pastor says, it's going to get gooder and gooder. So thank you for, for turning and listening uh, this morning on this Easter service, that, uh, taking this time, not being able to be here, but to be watching right now. I just pray that you pray for me as I bring this message, because this is kind of a hard message that I've got to bring this morning. But it's a good message, too, because it's all about Jesus, and that's all, all that matters. And I want to take this time before we get into the to the message, and, and I want to take this time and thank all the, the, the doctors and the nurses that is out there on that front line, giving their lives, giving their time, their, staying away from their families just to help people that they don't even know. They may they never they might never ever see them again, but they're giving their time. I think I want to stop and take this time to thank those ones at the grocery stores that are, are literally giving their life. Uh, for someone to get food because they can take a chance on getting this coronavirus too. But I want to stop and take this time more than anything to thank my Jesus Christ that died on that cross that we're going to be talking about what he did this Easter morning for each and every one of us and how much he loved us to do that. So I want to stop and just thank you Jesus for that. As we get into the to the message today, I want you to, if you've got your Bibles there, I want you to get them out. If you don't, go ahead and get them. If it's in another room or if it, maybe they're out there in your car where you've been going places and left out, wherever it is, I want you to go get it because we're going to do a little something different. I'm also going to use the screen a lot, but uh, I want to read you a story, a true story. And it's going to be to do with Easter. It's going to be to do with the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you've got your Bibles now, we're in Matthew chapter 27, and we're going to start in verse 27. And if you don't have your Bibles, that's okay. Uh, just listen to what God's Word says, because this story here is the reason that I'm here this morning preaching on this Easter Sunday. Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 says, Then the soldiers of the government took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on his, him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called the Gotha, this is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with God. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they passed by, revealed, revealed him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou shalt destroy this temple, and build it in three days. Save thyself, if thou be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. 
He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he will have him for he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabbathia. This is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This was called from Elias. And straightway one of the, them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Eliza will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to come and thank you so much for your son Jesus Christ that died on that cross, that, that went through agony and shame just for me, just for everyone that's listening. God, I want to thank you for allowing me to come this Easter morning to bring your word the way you want it brought. I thank you for a pastor that is obedient to doing whatever the Holy Spirit tells him to do. Lord, I want to thank you for this church of open arms that you allow us as a family to worship you, even though we're not here physically together, but Jesus, we're here spiritually together. And I want to thank you for that, Lord. I, thank, I want to thank you for giving uh, us the ability to share on a screen, on a little telephone or an iPad, just to watch and listen to your word being preached. I thank you for that, Lord. For the technology that you allowed us to have, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for those, those doctors and nurses again. I want to thank you, Lord, for the ones at the grocery stores. I want to thank you for the ones... Lord, that's given their, their finances to, to help provide to, to, to through this crisis has given all they can to help. And God, I want to thank you for allowing me not to have that fear upon me. To trust in you at all times. Not to be afraid of this, this stupid virus that's out there. Because God, you're a bigger God than that. And I want to thank you for that. Now Lord, I pray that you use every word that comes out of my mouth to glorify you, to glorify Jesus, to glorify the Holy Spirit this morning. And God, I want to thank you that again, that I've got the health and able to get up here and preach your word and stand on your word and live out of your word and walk the walk that you taught me to do, Lord, to not to be ashamed of you no matter where I'm at or where I go and not have the fear of all this that's going on on me. I thank you for that, Lord, because you died for every one of the things that I just mentioned just to help me live closer to you each and every day. I've got the faith and I've got the trust that everything is going to be okay because I've got you. And God, I love you so much. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Praise God. God is so good. Again, I'm excited. Again, Happy Easter. The title of my sermon this morning is Jesus Died So We Can Live. Can, can you imagine what Jesus had to go through just so we can live? Now, I'm talking not just a physical uh, being alive. I'm talking also spiritually living. You know, each and every day of our life, we're supposed to get in God's word. We're supposed to pray to God. We're supposed to thank God. We're supposed to have time for God. And we haven't been doing that, have we? I'm guilty. I haven't been given the time to God that I should have been given. You know, God allowed this virus to come upon this world world, not just this United States, but over this whole world, because this world is a wicked world. Now listen, there's a lot of good people, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good people that love the Lord and get up there and, and, and praise God and give God all the glory and worship God, and there's a lot of good people that that uh, is not able to even come to church, but they, they worship God at home because physically they can't, and God looks down and he blesses each and every one of us, but God is so tired of each and every one person that does not put him first in their life. And it's so easy not to put God first. Sometimes we put our families first. Sometimes we put our work first. I've preached this so many times. So many times that we put our families, we put our work, we put sports before God. And God says, now it's time. I'm tired of it. He did not cause this coronavirus, 
but in what he did. I know some of you are going to really start slashing me, and that's okay. I, I, I have no problem with that because, see, I ask God that every word that comes out of my mouth will be from him. Holy Spirit, speak everything. Don't let John speak nothing. So if you've got a problem with it, take it up with God. But God spoke to my heart, and he says, I allowed this to happen. So God could stop it just like that if he wanted to. But God allowed this to happen for a reason. This Easter Sunday, these churches all over the, the world or all over the United States are usually full. They're all usually full for one Sunday. We take one Sunday because of Easter Sunday, because of what Jesus did, we fill the church. Praise God that we do that. But what about the Sunday after that? What about the Sunday after that? What about the Wednesday night? What about the Saturday night we have services? What about whatever Wednesday night? Just whatever night we have. What about them nights? What about them days? Is it just that one time a year we're going to worship God? Something's wrong with this picture, church. Something's wrong with this. God's getting tired of this. That all the time we come together to fill the church is on a Sunday? Listen, when 9-1-1 happened, 9-11 happened, we fill the churches up for two or three weeks. And then next thing you know, we're back into our old ways and the church's doors is barely people going in. The seats are getting empty again. Well, I want you to look right now. I know you can't see this, but I'm looking all over Open Arms Church. It is so sad to see a church that's closed right now all over the world because God allowed it to happen because God's getting tired of church people, of Christian people not being obedient doing what they're supposed to do. See, God has called us. I'm going to be preaching before I'm bringing the, the scripture, but listen, God has called us to go out into the world and preach the truth. The Bible tells us to go out there and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And are we sitting here in church and sometimes not doing that? What are we doing wrong? I'll tell you what we're doing wrong. We're not putting God first. Jesus comes and he suffered the worst death that you possibly could have. The Bible says you could not even know he was a man before the beating he took. And we don't have the faith and we've got too much fear that, that we can't stop this coronavirus. My goodness, Jesus died and he come inside of me the minute I accepted him in my heart and the Holy Spirit come into me and he says, through them stripes, God, you are healed. You should not have fear. Only thing you fear is me, yourself. And that's all you fear is God only. Forget me in this fear of this coronavirus. Listen, you can get out of your house and drive around and do something. You don't have to go around a hundred people. And, and, but if you do, if somebody comes up around you and they touch you, you have faith that God's going to take care of that. You know, I, I, go, I go back to the scripture where it talks about the, the snake by bit, by getting bit by a poisonous snake or drinking poison and it won't kill you. Well, God says, don't tempt me to just go out and take poison or go out and find a snake and let that snake bite you because you will die. But he says, if that snake comes and bites you or something accidentally gets into you and it's poison, have the faith to believe that Jesus has done died for that and you will not die because of that. So if you truly have the faith and take no, no fear that you will be able to step out on that water as me and Pastor was talking earlier today, step out on that water and walk to Jesus. You might sink, but Jesus is there to pick you up and get you out of that. That is what this time of Easter is all about. It's all about Jesus Christ. He did it all. It's all done been done. Why are we got so much fear upon us? Listen, wake up. Leaders of this church, wake up. Start praying. Listen, me and pastors talking. I said a few uh, weeks ago that at 8 o'clock, I set my phone, me and my wife, at 8 o'clock, I set my phone. At 8 o'clock, it goes off. At 8 o'clock at night, we grab hands. We cry out to God. We ask for that healing. And we, we pray for the church. We pray for everything that's going on. We ask God to search our hearts. If it's anything that's not right, please reveal it to us. Then we come to you and give it to you. And then you will heal our land, as the Word says. Pastor and Trish does the very same thing. And I've heard some other ones that's doing that too. Praise God. But we all need to do that. Everybody that's listening this morning, you might not even be a church member here, but listen, at 8 o'clock, set your phone right now. Set your alarm right now. At 8 o'clock, when that alarm goes off, please, please get on your knees. 
Hold hands. If you're by yourself, just get on your knees and praise God and thank Him and ask God to reveal anything in your life that's not right. And then ask God to heal this land. If you want to see a great miracle happen, if you want to see this coronavirus be stopped, get on your knees and cry out to God and ask Him to heal it. And please quit fearing what's out there because God is the only one that you're supposed to fear, as I said earlier. Only God. Praise God. I'm getting excited. I'm just pulling all the pieces. Let's get into this. Matthew 28, 1 through 2, he says, He is risen. You know what Jesus went through? He went through the agony, the torment. He went through the shame, the, the, the embarrassment of even being naked. He went through the beating and the torment of his body. As I said earlier, that you couldn't even tell he was a man. But that's not the end of the story. The story gets better and better. As the pastor says, it gets gooder and gooder. And I'm excited to share with you right now. He is risen. Praise God. He is risen. There's no demon in hell can keep my Jesus in that grave. That tomb was rolled away. And he come out and he's with the Father right now. Sitting beside him. Fighting for me through all this virus that's going around. He's fighting for you through all this virus that's going around. Quit having fear upon you. Get excited for Jesus this Easter Sunday morning and thank God for what he's doing right now in Open Arms Church with nobody in here but me and Pastor. It don't matter. You're here spiritually and these seats are full because of God. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 28, 1 through 2 says, He is risen. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Now, I, I just want you to picture this. Jesus told his disciples, he told both of the Marys, that all this was going to happen. He told them all, past. he said, all this was going to happen. And then I'm going to rise on that third day. I'm coming out of that tomb on that third day. Where was the disciples? You know, Marys, both Marys was going to the tomb. I don't know you know, I, I think about this sometimes. You know, we go to the grave sites to, when we lose a lost loved one or a good friend. And sometimes we go to the grave. I've done it myself. and go to the grave. They're not there. <laughs> They're not there. The minute they die, the minute they take a breath, they've got a choice to make. They make that choice here before they're still alive, either going to heaven or going to hell. There's only two choices either heaven or hell. They're not in that grave no more. They're out of that grave. But yet we still go. And, and just to, to maybe sit there and talk to somebody that's not there, that's, that, that's fine. It don't matter. You know where they're at. They're either in heaven or, or they're in hell. That's the only two places they can be. My, my prayer is they're all in heaven. And that's what I'm hoping and praying. But listen, there's so many people that we're not going out into this world telling them about Jesus that literally are going to hell. So many. The Bible tells me there's, there's two roads and that one road going to heaven is going to be very few on it. That scares me, Pastor. That, 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 that fear of God is on me right now because what am I doing to teach people about Jesus Christ? What am I doing about going out and telling people how much Jesus loved them, what Jesus did for them? Or am I just wrapped up in the world and don't have time to take, tell people about Jesus Christ? It's sad. But you know, as, as we go, as two Marys were going to the tomb, they were just going there, I think, just to, to worship and thank God, thank Jesus for what he did, dying on that cross. But they had forgot about it. It's just like the disciples. They had forgot about what Jesus said he was going to do. He says, I'm not standing in that tomb. I'm going to rise in three days. And just like us today, you know, Think about these church members. We know everything that Jesus has done. We've come to church. We hear a pastor preach on it. You've heard me preach on it. About what Jesus has done for every one of us. How he, he sacrificed everything. And God sacrificed his own son. For each and every one of us. If it was just, just for me he would have done it. If it was just for you he would have done it. And then we forget about it. You know. I know that if you truly know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you will be in heaven. I know that there's nothing, the Bible says there's nothing to snatch you out of, out of God's hand. But that's not the whole story. That's not the only reason Jesus died on that cross. He died for your salvation. But he says, 
Go out into the world and preach and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are not doing what God has called us to do. So we have forgotten. We're no different than the disciples. We're no different than the two Marys that forgot what Jesus said during the time that he, he was crucified. That he would come out of that grave. He would not stay in that grave. And they done forgot about all that. And we have forgot about it too. In the way that we live in this world, this old wicked world. See, the coronavirus has come out into the world. Where's Jesus at? My goodness, why are we not talking about Jesus every time we turn on the TV? It's about what's happening out in the world. The sickness, everybody that's dying, everything. Listen, I feel for those ones that lost loved ones. I cry out to God for them. I pray for their families. I just pray so hard, God, please let it stop. Because it's, it's, listen, it's about me. You don't have the faith and the trust that I gave you on that cross that I bore every sin. I took every beating of, that you could possibly take. He took things that, the, 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 these, I want to say these big iron pieces on a, on a whip that wasn't just little cut places on Jesus. Them things greased it, grabbed his meat, and literally pulled them out. I mean, listen, the Bible says you couldn't even know he was a man. And we forget about that. We forget about not being able to go out into the world and tell people what Jesus did for us. And we cannot stop and say, with those stripes, listen, they were little stripes. With those stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. There's nothing, no demon can come against us if we have the faith and the trust in Christ itself. Whatever comes against us will bounce off. I pray every morning to put the full armor at the top of my head and above my feet. I mentioned this the last time I preached, that God covers me. I am not scared of what the world can give me. I am more fearful of what God thinks of me. And I'm going to stand on God's word. And I'm going to believe in God's word. And I'm going to thank God every day that when things come at me, they're going to bounce off because I believe in Him. I believe in Him. And behold, there was a great earthquake. I'm going to stop there again. <clears throat> you know, we've been having a lot of earthquakes around the world. And the Bible says that uh, this is just another sign of Jesus coming back soon. This is just another time that old trumpet is getting ready to blow. And I cannot wait till that happens. I'm, I'm tired of this old wicked world. I'm tired of, of living in a world that, that don't trust God like we should. And like I say, there's a lot of good people and I thank God for each and every one of you. There's a lot of people that, that love Jesus. But there's a lot of people that love Jesus but don't put him first. I just pray right now that we turn from that. But this big earthquake, I really believe, when it happened, it was felt all over the world. Now, the Bible don't say that. But Holy Spirit has laid that on my heart. I've been working on this, this message for the last few days. And, and, and every time I get into my closet and I pray and, and I ask God to show me, he, he just revealed, he said, this earthquake was, was just shook all over the world. Everybody in that time period built that earthquake. Amen. And I believe that with all my heart. I do. Amen. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. You know, there's, no, there's not a time that I get into the Word that I read Scripture that there's something new that, sh that comes out at me. Every time I read Scripture, I know the, a lot of Scripture. I'm not no brain or some been through college or anything to learn about the word of God but I do know this that there's times that I read this scripture and I see something and then there's the next time I go back and read this same scripture and God shows me something else Amen. and I love that, that God is, is a God of, of, of joy and laughter and as I read this it, it just it was so amazing to think about this angel that not only could he roll that stone away, when it usually takes four men, big men, to move that stone. That's how heavy that stone is. It was at Jesus' tomb. But this one little angel come down and roll that stone away. And, and the funny part, he just jumped up and sat on it. I've been thinking about this. Come on, I, I think about Zacchaeus up in a tree. 
Now I know that's not an angel, but I'm just thinking about Zacchaeus up in a tree. You know, he's little in stature. And the Bible says he had to climb a sycamore tree to see Jesus. He had that much faith. And I think about this angel just jumping on this great big stone that takes four men to move, that he moved it just with himself, and then jumped up on it and sat on it. I just think, God, that's, that's, that's funny. I mean, it really is. That, that will bring you smile and joy right now. Because uh, an angel, not only he would have just throw the stone away, he stood there and waited for the two Marys to get there. But he just jumped over and sat on it. And I, I, I just, I laughed at the other night. I quit laughing. But I thought, you know, that's, that's so cute, Lord. Thank you so much for that. Matthew 28, 3 through 4 says, His countenance, this is talking about the angel now, His countenance was like lightning, and His clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for the fear of Him and became like dead men. Oh my goodness. That angel had power, brother. When God sent somebody, a dozen, it might not even be an angel, it just might be someone like Paul. When He sent somebody, He don't just send somebody just to halfway do a job. He sends them to do the big jobs. And he sent this angel to move a stone. Like I said, it takes four men to move. And this angel looked like lightning. He was white as snow. To me, that's purity. That's, that's being pure for God. But what the, the, the exciting thing about it, that there was so much light from this angel. There's so much I want to say strength because he could roll that stone. There was so much strength in him that the men that was guarding that tomb fell down like dead. Now, when you fall down like dead, I'm going to tell you, you didn't even move. You didn't move a muscle. You were just like, you was literally dead. And I thought, wow. This angel had the power of God Almighty because God sent that angel to do this. To move that stone and to, and to let Jesus, Jesus come out on his own. He come out on his own. Jesus come out. He did, God just used this angel to do a part of the work, to talk to the, to the two Marys. And let's, let's go and see what the angels told the two Marys. Matthew 28, 5 through 6 says, But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid. Let me say this, church. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of this going on in the world. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. Because the only one you've got to answer to is Almighty God. You don't have to answer to this coronavirus. That's just a name. And like I told you the last time I preached, just say Jesus. Amen. Just say Jesus and it'll take care of it, I promise. Do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen. Praise God. I love to hear that every time I read it. He is risen. There's nothing going to keep my Jesus down. He is risen. As he said. See, I want to go back to that. He done told the two Marys. He done told the disciples. I am going to be risen in three days. And it's done happen. And they forget about it. Just like I said earlier. We forget. He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. He took him in and showed him. He's not there. Sometimes we physically got to see something before we believe it. God says, greater that are we here now that cannot physically see Jesus, but know him and accept him in our hearts and believe that he can heal us today. Believe that he can Beat this coronavirus. Believe that he's bigger than that. He said, greater are you that believe without sin than those that really literally see. My goodness, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive to, to this Easter Sunday. What a time to be able to go and share Jesus to people that don't know him. This is the best opportunity, church. Listen, this is the best opportunity that we have got right now is that everything is shut down. The whole world is shut down. And we've got time to call someone and tell them about Jesus. Amen. You might not be able to go see them. Get your phone out. Let them know that Jesus loves them. It might be the only opportunity they'll ever have to know Jesus right now. And listen to me. They're scared. 
If they don't know Jesus, they are scared of this virus. If they don't know Jesus, they are fearful. And what better time is to talk to them, tell them. You, each one of us has got somebody in our family that we know by their fruit, they don't know who Jesus is. I don't want you to go and judge them. I want you to go and love them. I want you to go and tell them about there's a, there's a Jesus that died on the cross. And he's done promise that he'll take care of all these problems out there. He says, there will be problems that will come. But if you believe in me and trust in me, I've overcome all that. I died on that cross for all that. Sickness is no more if you believe and trust in me. If you've got the faith, as I always love to say, is that little mustard seed. If you've got that kind of faith, then believe that and it will be taken care of. Sometimes I wonder if we truly believe like we should. Matthew 28, 9, 15 says, The women worship the risen Lord. I love this. And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice! I love, I love it. I've been listening to Pastor preaching and his little voice has changed. Rejoice! I can't do it as good as him. But listen, rejoice. This is really rejoice right now. This is, Jesus died on that cross that we could be alive here on this Easter Sunday. Let's rejoice and give God the praise and the glory. We need to worship him. Listen, one day you will meet Jesus face to face and how are you going to worship him then? Are you going to fall at his feet? Are you going to lay down? Are you going to be dancing? What is the song I can only imagine say? What are we going to be doing? I really believe in all my heart. I'm going to be laying on my face and I'm going to be holding Jesus at his feet and I'm going to just thank him for every opportunity that he gave me to preach your word and God and all the forgiveness that you died on that cross that I'm forgiven of all my sins that there was a way. Listen, every nail that went in Jesus that went in that cross that then into the cross. I don't care if you're a drunkard. I don't care if you are homosexual. I don't care what sin it is. I don't care what you're doing wrong. He took it all on that cross. That old rugged cross. He took everything. Listen, I don't care if you've done this and you've done that. I don't care if you murdered someone. I don't care what it is you've done. I don't care if you've lied. I don't care if you stole something. I don't care what it is. Everything that you can think of was nailed to that old cross so that you can be forgiven and you can have an eternity with Jesus Christ and live with Him forever. And how are you going to worship Him? You will stand before Him one day with no mama there, no daddy there, no husband, no wife there, no child there. Only you, me and the pastor, will not be there with you. You will be there by yourself and you will be face to face with God. Listen, worship Him now before that time comes. Get yourself set right before that time comes. The two Marys met Jesus and the first thing they did, they fell at His feet and worshiped Him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren, go to, to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Where was the disciples at when he was on that cross? They were scattered. The only two, the Marys, the women. The women had the backbone, Pastor. Come on, men. Let's wake up this Easter morning. Let's see why we don't have a backbone that our wives have got more backbone to worship Jesus and, te and teach our kids about Jesus and make sure they're in church. Let us have the backbone that God prepared for us as he did at the very beginning of time when he gave Adam the first man to be here on earth and said, you will rule this world as long as you do what I tell you to do. It's today too. God says, man, stand up and be the man of the house. Be the father that you're supposed to be. Be the daddy that you're supposed to be. Be the husband that you're supposed to be. Worship Jesus. Let him be first in your house today. Let him be first in your home. Man, put God first and everything else will fall right in place. Your wife will be changed. Your children will be changed. Listen, I want to say this. I have seen so much change since I watched the news. God always makes anything bad good. He, he makes good out of it. But I have seen children, mom and daddy at home because they can't work no more. They're home and they're playing games with the kids. Can you imagine what these kids are thinking? What's going on here? What's mom and dad doing playing with us? They don't never have time with us before, but now they've got time for us. Praise God. And I've seen people 
husband and wives talking uh, to each other and, and, and sharing. Listen, me and my wife's having an awesome blast. Good time right now. We are having an awesome time. We're, we're going out on the farm together. We're doing things together. We're, you know, she even said, I can even cook, see? I told you I can cook. And I thought, we go out and eat all the time. Don't get me wrong. That's just something we like to do. It's not because my wife can't cook. I'm not going to get in trouble here. But she can cook good. I, I may never thought my heart. But listen to me. I have had more fun sitting at a, at a table with my wife talking about God, talking about our family, talking about different things, sitting there enjoying eating and, 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 and realizing that we've been going out so much that we don't even take time to talk about you, Jesus. I thank God for everything that's going on in the world. I, I wouldn't want none of this bad to happen. But God says it's time. It's time for families to get back to be families. It's time that we take time to, to come and worship God in church. It's time that we go out into the world and tell people about Jesus. It's time, church. This is our last chance. God had revealed that to me through the Holy Spirit. This is our last chance to do what we're supposed to do. And this trumpet is getting ready to sound. God said, there's one more. There's one more out there that needs to be saved. And you're sitting at home not doing nothing. You're not telling nobody nothing. You're out into the world working so much. And you're out there watching these sports. And it's so much more important to me. But now I'm putting a stop to it. And he did. Amen. He did. If you don't believe me, look around. If you don't believe me, why are you sitting at home watching me? You would be here at church this Easter Sunday. Amen. Don't tell me that God didn't take his hand off us because he did. And we're supposed to be like the two Marys. We're supposed to be worshiping him. As I close with this scripture here, it's time Amen. to live. Woo! It's time to live, Pastor. Hallelujah. Jesus doesn't die that we may live. It's time to live this Easter morning. It's time to go out into the world and do what we're supposed to do. It's time to stand up for Jesus right now. No other time is ever greater than right now. This, this one moment right now, it's time for us. See, when we do come back to church, when we do get back in here, it's going to be completely different. It's going to be completely different. Man, Pastor both the Holy Spirit's going to show us both. It's going to be different. It's going to be a different type of worship. It's going to be worship that now you see it for yourself. As me and Pastor have been preaching this for the last two years, what's going to be happening? God is going to get our attention, but He's got it right now. We're going to come into this church and we're going to be smiling from ear to ear. And we're going to be, listen, we're not going to just be smiling because we're coming back. We're going to be smiling because we're coming to worship our Jesus Christ. It's not about Pastor, it's not about John, it's about Jesus. It's about Holy Spirit living in you. It's about what you're doing with what God wants you to do. It's about Jesus Almighty. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. He's coming back again for His church. He's coming back, church, real soon. He's coming back for us. Let's read this scripture as we close it out. I love this. <clears throat> Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All! Oh, come on, church, say it with me. All authority has been given to me, this is Jesus, in heaven and on earth. Go there for and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Praise God. Give God all the glory. Listen, church. He don't get no gooder than that. And everything that Jesus said that we're supposed to do, He says, now, if you accept me as my Lord and Savior, as your Lord and Savior, and you, you live in me now, so greater things we can do than Jesus can do. So everything that Jesus can do, we can do. And let's do it. We're not doing it. Let's step out of that boat on that water. And this time, let's don't sink. Let's walk straight to Jesus. And get excited for what he's doing. Praise God. Listen church. I love you. I miss you. And I'm excited. This Easter morning. I am so excited. Again to bring God's word. Please. 
listen to what I've said. It's all scripture. Everything I've spoke to you, I've showed you scripture. And God is ready to move and to heal this land again. Eight o'clock, please be doing what I've asked you to do. Pray for healing of this land. Let's worship Jesus together. As I close in prayer, everybody bow your heads. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for guiding my voice. I thank you for just allowing me to be here. I thank you again for that pastor that I dearly love so much that says it's time to preach again this Sunday, John. And I thank you for that. So God, I pray blessings on him and Trish. I pray blessings upon our elders of this church and their wives. I pray blessings on our deacons and their wives. And I pray blessings on our congregation, Lord, of this church. I pray for other churches out there. I pray for other people. I pray for this whole world, this whole nation, that we all turn to you. That if we do not, if, if there's some out there, Lord, that don't know you, let this be the opportunity that we can call, we can step out and have that faith to tell someone about you this Easter Sunday. We love you, Lord, and I thank you so much for what you've done. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God.